Welcome back to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This is Break and Continue, so we can make our loops a little more powerful. So let's go ahead and start out with a list of strings, and we're going to call that names again. We're going to make it a new list, and let's go ahead and initialize it with Adam, Jamie, Steve, Kim, Shell, and Tom go now that we have our list let's make us a for loop so let's start at zero we'll go into the count i plus plus so we will hit every single name in our list and now in our loop let's say we're going to write the name like we usually do we will say names at index i and that as we have seen many times by this point is going to print all of our names so first let's talk about break. So we've seen break before in our switch statement and it's used to jump out of the case which takes us out of the loop. And that's exactly what break does in any other loop as well. So break will immediately take us out of the loop. So even if I has not hit the count, even if we have more stuff to do under the break, it's going to jump straight here after this code block ends. So why would we use it? Well, you might use it to end a loop when you finish early. So say you were going through your names or any other list of anything and you were looking for a specific thing or waiting for a specific input to happen. So say we're looking for the name shell to appear in our list. Maybe we say if names at i equals equals shell then we're going to break so what's going to happen is it's going to come in here it's going to go through adam and jamie and steve and kim and it's going to fail this condition every time and write their name but when we get to shell this is going to be true it's going to hop in here this break is going to hit and it's going to jump all the way down here so what's going to happen is it's not going to print shell because we're going to break at shell. So maybe you want to do something else in here for shell, or maybe not. Maybe you just want to end your loop at shell. Another good example of when you might use a break statement is say you have a while loop that you want to run conditionally that waits for user input. So say we want a console write line give me your name and say actually let's make that a right and then say we do string input equals console dot read line and now maybe if the input is equal to exit maybe then we want to break because at that point maybe we're done so we want this to be infinite until some outside input comes in that can break this loop. So at this point we could say console.write line we're done here. So I'll just comment out this write line here. So now we can run this. When we do, it's going to ask us for a name over and over until it gets the word exit. And then it's going to break out of the loop, hit we're done and then terminate once it gets its read line. So using a break in a while loop, especially an infinite while loop, can be very handy if you don't know in your application when your condition is going to fire. Like, like for instance, user input, maybe an error condition or a disconnect, something like that, so you know, okay, we need to stop what we're doing and go do something else. Okay, so now we know what break does. Let's move on to continue. But first, let's clean up a little bit. Let's comment this line out so we can keep our note about break. And let's delete this if statement here and go ahead and block comment out our while loop. And we can keep our right line, that's all good. Okay, so now, what is continue? So continue is written just like break, one word with a semicolon. And what it does is it will immediately take us to the next iteration of the loop. So instead of breaking all the way out of the loop and being done, going to the next line after the code block, 
what it's going to do is jump all of the rest of the executions of the loop and take us back up to our four and check the next condition and then do the next thing of the loop. So that being said, say we have if names I, Jamie, continue, and we put our right line back to print the names, what's going to happen is it's going to say, okay, Adam is not Jamie, write his name. Then it's going to get to Jamie. It is Jamie. Continue is going to go zoop all the way to the end of the loop and then go back and keep going through the loop. So we're effectively going to skip Jamie. So we get all of our names except him. So you might use a continue to skip or filter out parts of your loop. So no matter what's in here, no matter what type you have, if it's an int or a string or whatever, you could always check it. And then if it's a special case, like not something you normally would do in your loop, like an admin command or an error or some sort of special user input, anything like that, you can do something special here or you can skip it all together but keep going with your loop instead of breaking all the way out. So one last thing I want to mention, we did for loops and while loops for break and continue, but just like a for loop, you could use a for each loop and do the exact same thing here, except this would be name. So we could say for every name in our list names, if the name is Jamie, we could continue or we could break. I just wanted to use a for loop so we could get a little refresher on it since we did for each last time. So next up, we have a big step because we'll be creating our own methods. So thank you for watching, everybody. Hopefully this is helpful for you. Happy coding out there. And as always, until next time, take care.